Hey now, Peter Grizz here. Today, I've got two very different champions from two completely different companies, but yes, they were both called the champion. Uh, this is the Champion C from Victorinox. Model number 1.5793. What an amazing number that is. Just got this the other day. Yeah, missing the key ring. Got the old nickel silver shield. This is a very early Champion C. This is, uh, you know, from certainly from the first couple of years that the Champ C was available. Notice we've got the aluminum tip tweezers. Beautiful. Got the old tweet, the old toothpick there. On the back, got just the four turn corkscrew. The original fine point screwdriver with the slightly tapered tip. And then we got that rimmer. Bam! On the front, of course, we've got the famous opening layer. The cap lifter, screwdriver, mandatory on all multi-tools. Got that can opener with the 2D Phillips. Outstanding. Next up, we've got the inline Phillips driver. Double your Phillips, double your fun with Victorinox gum. Then we've got their version of the magnifying glass, the original version, old gray housing, a little dirty, still works great. I'm going to clean this up, but I generally like to just uh, film them in the, uh, you know, when I do a video like this, I'll just film the way I get them. And then later I'll do a video after I clean them up. Next up, got them 91 millimeter scissors. Still got the screw in the rivet, all that good stuff. Next, the everybody's favorite tool, probably the most used tool in Victorinox history, the fish scaler. Got that wood saw. Bam. Got that metal saw. Double bam. Finally, on the back, we got the world famous pen blade. You gotta love it. Or maybe not. Me, not so much, but I'll take it when I can get it. Then we've got the main blade. Note the four line tang stamp on the front, no stamp on the back. So, generally, when you find that, they are from 1973 to 1976. Occasionally, you find them elsewhere, but that is a good indication that you can nail your knife down to right about 1975, slightly earlier. Boom. So that's the Victorinox champion. Now, what other champion is there? Of course, there's the Swiss champ. I'm not talking about the Swiss champ. That's not a champion. That's a Swiss champion. Of course, there's the earlier versions of the champions. Uh, I'm not going to show them right now. What we've got here is the Wenger champion. Model 779L. Yes, Wenger had a model called the Champion. Uh, it was later supplanted by models like the Monarch, uh, the Colonel, the Major, uh, not so much the Major, the Major's like 23, the Monarch, the Colonel, uh, the Tool Chest Plus, uh, the Monarch adds a few, changes a few tools out on this, the Colonel is basically this with a Phillips screwdriver, um, the Tool Chest Plus adds pliers and a wrench and all that stuff. And the tool chest adds the wrench, um, or adds the pliers. So you get a bunch of different tools on there. But on the back, we got that lovely five-turn corkscrew with the deep fluting. That's a great corkscrew right there. Then we've got the Wenger Reamer. She's a reamer. She'll ream you good. On the front, we've got a cap lifter screwdriver. Notice there is no stripping notch. Also, it does not have the patented push to lock mechanism that Wenger is so famous for. 
Then we've got the dog leg can opener. Uh, implemented in 1963, patented by Richard Eichenberger. Uh, very cool. Wenger used this can opener from 1963 to 1973, and then they switched to the modern lobster claw can opener, which they, again, they did modify that and well, enlarged that in 1976. Next layer is a little sad story here. We've got the Wenger what was a magnifying glass it's missing the lens uh kind of common so you see that a lot on the old well, these old ones um what i'm gonna do is uh I, I already i emailed victorinox just to check with them i'm sure they'll do it i'll get i'll send it to them and have them put a lens in it because uh it's the exact same size as the tool they still use on their delamont series the evo grips and evolutions and whatnot so that shouldn't be a problem to get a lens popped in there for five bucks. Uh, you know, I could probably find one from a beat up knife and steal it, but that's the weird thing is this knife is not beat up at all. This knife is in virtually unused condition. Now we've got the Wenger Disgorger. Very cool. You know, very popular tool. I wouldn't leave home without it. You never know when you're gonna have to scale some fish. You know, scaling fish is like 90% of what people do in the city. Um, got that Wenger metal saw file. Uh, very similar to the earlier uh, Victorinox files in that it does not have a cleaning tip. Wenger never implemented the, the uh, finger cleaning tip on here. They kept it tip, uh, cross cut all the way up to the end. Also, the saw, the nail nick on the saw, uh, they're a little tougher to get out, but still no problem. Got the brush surface, much like Victorinox. Great little saw. Gets the job. Gets the job done. Then our next layer. Look at that. These cool scissors. For those people who dislike uh, the Wenger scissors, um, I mean... This is what they originally did, you know, and uh, they, they went with a different style. They went with that lever, uh, torsion bar, whatever you want to call it. And uh, uh, the advantage to that is you don't got to worry about this spring getting bent, broken, misaligned. That does happen occasionally. Although this is a much beefier spring. I will say that than it was found on the Victorinox models with that one layer jammer. Finally, we've got the nail file. This is a great nail file. Look at the machining work on the tip. Uh, now the nail files are just very flat. They're basically a flat sheet of metal with almost no uh, finish work to them. Very little taper. This one has all that extra grinding on the end. And you can see it. It kind of reminds you of the, uh, the wide back nail files on some of the early Victorinox gentlemen's knives. And the Fanger gentlemen knives. And then we've got that old Wenger main blade. Note it's just got more of a drop point profile, sweeping belly on it. Very slicey. Got that lovely Wenger Delamont Switzerland stainless with the crossbow. Outstanding. And then again, it's got nothing on the back. Notice this knife has a bail, a big boy bail at that. A very good bail, excellent bail through the hollow rivet. Very cool and uh, very, very beefy. Nice to have the bail. I believe they kept the bails up until about 73 or so. Their early 70s catalogs still show them having bails. So this knife, you know, it could probably dates to around 1970 or so. It could be slightly earlier, but I don't think so. I think it's right around 1970. I mean, it's amazing what shape it's in. Notice that it's got that pressed in inlaid piece of metal that's it's still got the paint on it. A lot of times the paint's missing from in there. She's in fantastic shape. And then finally, we've got those slightly more difficult to get out, but hidden toothpick and the Wenger tweezers. And you also get the added bonus of 
the hidden liners. So that is, you got your seven layer champion versus your seven layer champion. Two champions from two different makers from roughly the exact same time, uh, having the exact same features. Uh, who copied who? Uh, I, I probably Wenger copied Victorinox with the champion thing. Uh, I know the Victorinox champion goes back to 1952 when they came out with the fish disgorger and the nail and uh, the metal file, <coughs> the long, uh, and they introduced their champion model in 1952. And uh, I don't know that Wenger had a knife this thick, although Wenger did implement uh, such uh, cool tools like the magnifying glass, uh, you know, earlier. They, they, let, they put them out in the 60s, or Victorinox uh, didn't come out with them until 1973. So that's something pretty cool to consider. You know, there's a little back and forth going on between the companies. It's kind of, you know, it's just like any car company, any technology company. You know, there's a race to be competitive. One company comes out with a feature. You don't want to be left in the left in the past, so you have to match them. So Wenger came out with a magnifying glass. Victorinox comes out with a magnifying glass. That's just how it goes. So uh, that is the tale of two Swiss champions. Anyway, I'm Petey Grizz. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Petey Grizz, out.